it's time for the smash that small pad collaboration and this month i decided since it's july we're going to do christmas in july with the hearth and holiday six by eight pad from simple stories hey guys it's beth welcome this is the smash those small pads collaboration it's just a small collaboration that i do with my friend sarah who's crafting and relaxing over here on youtube and Kathy, who is Stampin' Cat over on Instagram. And basically we just choose a small pad each month and work on using it up. Since it is July, I am focusing on Christmas in July for the last half of the month. And so I chose the Simple Stories 6x8 Hearth and Holiday Pad. And I have a plan for this pad. I want to make some nail file holders for craft shows coming up this fall. I thought I'd get a head start on those. I also have these foam stickers that go with this pad, but I don't know. I mean, obviously I won't use many of them on the nail file holders since they are pretty big, but I know I'm going to have some scraps left over. So I may end up making some cards. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the last little bits but i'm going to do this as a process video since it's such a small collaboration we do have a little leeway so i am going to be making my nail file holders with you all so let's get crafting project number one is going to be our nail file holders i've gone through the pad and taken out all the papers that i feel like i can use on the nail file holders Luckily, all of the patterns that had scenes on the backside or the cut aparts on the backsides had like a good pattern that I could use on the other side. So I was able to use all but two, uh, two patterns in the pad. So at this point, I'm just going through all of the papers and trimming them down to three and a half by six inches. And this will be the piece that we need for the nail file holders. And then I'm keeping my, I will separate my strips out off to the side at some point. We'll have two separate strips of scraps that we will use for our other projects later in the video. These go together so fast and they're really good sellers at my craft shows at Christmas time. Now that all of our pieces are trimmed down, we're gonna score. And I'm just using an old scoreboard from, it might've been Martha Stewart. Anyway, I'm scoring at one, one and a quarter, two and a quarter, and two and a half inches. And this creates the sides of our box. So again, that's one inch, one and a quarter inch, two and a quarter inches, and then two and a half inches. And I scored the rest off camera and now we can go ahead and fold our boxes up. I Once I get all of my scores folded, I go ahead and glue everything together. And sometimes it, the, the scores work out that they are like nice and straight and I can kind of push the box flat once it's glued so that I can burnish it easier. My scoreboard, I feel like is a little too well loved. And so sometimes I don't always get the straightest scores. I'm not sure how that happens, but so sometimes I can't go completely flat, but I try to get flat where I can so that I can burnish. But again, that's all there is to it uh, to putting, you know, the sides together. And I'm doing four at a time here just because the next step requires my clamps and I only have enough to do four at a time. So it just works out that I can cycle through the clamps, work on the next set of four, and then reuse those clamps and start on the next set of four and so on. So I'm going to get this last one folded up and on the inside of this one you can see it was one of those scenes that 
I wouldn't have been able to use for the nail file holders. So for this next step, I find the bottom. So if I have a directional paper, I want to make sure I'm using the bottom of the paper. And I just push in the sides of the bottom and then pinch the bottom together. So this was one that it, I believe it had a directional pattern with the candy canes. And so I had to make sure I got the bottom and then I'm adding my clamps to keep the bottom pinched together while my glue dries. And I'm just kind of squirting in somewhat glue in there. It doesn't matter how far in you go. You just need to get enough in there that it will keep your bottom glued together. So finish up this last one and we can move on to the next step. I have finished gluing up all of my boxes. These were the last four and now we get to decorate. And this is kind of the trickiest part for me because my the bags I use are wider. They're wide enough that I can come off both side edges of my like file holder with my embellishments, but I can't like go crazy. And so it's becoming kind of a challenge for me to find small enough embellishments that I can use on these in my stash. So I need to like seek out small, like not too small, but like some smaller embellishments that I will be able to use on nail file holders. So here I found some stickers in my stash. There were only like three stickers left in the pack. So I decided to use those up because the colors coordinated well enough and the size worked perfect but they were clear stickers, so I needed to back them on some white cardstock. And so here, I'm now that I've got them stuck to the white cardstock, I'm just fussy cutting around all of them. Some of the smaller puffy stickers that you get in the collections, like from Echo Park or Doodlebug, work really well for these. I love using those when I can, like if I have them with the collection. But when I don't, it's just kind of trying to find what I have in my stash. So I'm trying to clean up some of my fussy cuts and then I'm just gluing them on. Here I wanted something a little bit more behind that ornament, so I just used the last candy cane sticker right on the paper to go behind the ornament. So I will finish decorating the rest of these off camera. I'm going to do one more pulling in some other tiny embellishments from my stash and I decided to layer in some cardstock on these. I brought in some white and red cardstock and like some smaller circle punches to layer up behind my sand hat. And then the rest I will decorate off camera and we'll come back and get them packaged up. All of my boxes are decorated. I used a bunch of those little Santa hats and finished off some sticker sheets. And now I am bringing in my nail files. These I get off Amazon and I will include a link in the description box below because it's a pretty good deal. The files work really well. And then these are just like the pretzel rod size bags. Like so if you decorate pretzel rods, these are like the size bags you use to package those. They work great for the nail file holders. And I will try and put a link down below for those as well. For our next project, project number two, we are using the scraps that were left from trimming down the file holders. So these scraps were about two and a half by six inches. And I'm just trimming them down to two and a quarter inch. I thought these scraps would be perfect for the Hershey's Nugget holders, but the paper is rather thin, and so I decided to double them up, and that way there is a fun pattern on both sides. So I'm just gluing them together and then burnishing them down really well, and then I will let that dry for a bit. Once it's completely dry, or I think it's completely dry. I'm going to come in and score and I'm just scoring at 3 eighths in 
from both sides. And this gives me just a little bit of a lip, like I can fold the sides up and that will hold the nuggets in place. And it will also add like a little bit of both patterns to be seen from the front. So I'm going to fold these up and kind of use my bone folder to help make sure those folds are strong. And then I'm going to put my nuggets in just to make sure that they still fit. And then with the two inch, like two by six inch pieces that we had left from cutting off the top of the paper, I'm going to create some wraps for the nuggets. So I'm trimming them down to one and a quarter. And then I originally trimmed them down to, I think like two and three quarters, but I realized like this green one I did at two and three quarters and it was like just barely going around. And there was like no, not much overlap at all. So on my next round of pieces, I think I go to three inches. So I would, I would recommend doing one and a quarter inches wide by three inches long. So I'm looking for another pattern that I want to include on here. And again, trimming it down to one and a quarter, and this is where I just decide to go with three inches, and then that also has the benefit of not creating some extra tiny scraps. And it just makes it much easier to wrap those around. So I know that with these particular papers, I'm not going to be able to cover every single nugget, just with those scraps that I have left. So. I'm, I may just not cover them all and leave some open so people can see that they are Hershey's Nuggets and then just kind of alternate the wrapped with the non-wrapped. And again, I'm able to use those like Wilton pretzel size bags for these and slide that in and then usually I just kind of tie it around and then add like a tag or something at the top. Here are all of the boxes I made and I went ahead and cut my wrappers down but I don't want to wrap them just yet since it's July and fall cry probably won't start putting the Christmas nuggets out until like November so I will I have my pieces ready to go and can finish them closer to the time. So we had some real thin strips that were left from cutting down our wraps. And so I decided that I could probably make some very simple bows with these strips. And so I cut one strip at two and three quarters inches for the like bottom, the flat part of the bow. And then I did a four inch strip for the actual bow part. So the top that I'm folding together right now. And then we'll need a one and three quarter inch thin strip that we'll use to wrap later. I'm trimming off like the little glue parts on this bottom part and then doing some fishtails. But I, and I apologize for kind of being, I didn't realize I was mostly off camera, but once I had my like bow strip, I just kind of folded the pieces the ends underneath and glue those together and then that just creates like the 3D bow and then these are some tiny strips that I had left from something early on and so oh from cutting down the backs of the nugget holders and so I'm just cutting these to one and three quarters inches and this just wraps around the center of the bow just to kind of finish it off a little bit and I don't know, give it a little extra color and detail. So very rudimentary, but it's a way to use up those scraps that we had left and it could go on my nugget packs. Okay, here are my projects. The nail file holders, the Hershey's Nugget holders, which again, I will wait 
with wrapping closer to the Christmas holiday fair times. And then I ended up getting about 20 bows in a couple different sizes after I made the ones that I showed you guys how, like with the bigger ones, I took some of the smaller scraps that I had left after trimming them down and I got these little bows. So you can see the difference in sizes there. And after all three of those projects, these are the scraps that I had left. I used some of the scraps to punch some holes to add into the centers of some of the bows just to give them a little bit extra. And then some of the other scraps were too small to use with the hole punch that I had. So those were the scraps left. Now there were two sheets that I did not use because it had the Santa Claus Express like ledger or notebook kind of paper pattern on one side and then this pattern on the other side and I actually thought these would be fun in a December daily even if it's you know like folded up and tucked into something I just thought these would be fun and I didn't want to mess with them so I'm going to hold those and use them in uh, journals but that is the rest of the hearth and holiday paper pad from simple stories I did not use my foam stickers, which is just fine because I can put these back in my embellishment stash and they will get used. So hope you guys got some inspiration today on using up a six by eight pad. Um, these bows can be used on the top of the Hershey's Nugget packs, or they could just be like a bag topper for some other little bagged gifts like I could use them. I do little bags of Christmas tags made from scraps as well. I could always add that on to like the top of the bags from the tags. So I just thought those would get used and it was a way to use up some of those little bitty scraps. Thank you guys so very much for your time today. Please be sure to check out the links link for Sarah and Kathy down in the description box below to see what they made with their small pads this month. Thank you so very much for your time and hope you all have a very crafty day.